Spark ATM Systems is an independent ATM deployer. We, we deploy uh, ATMs into convenience locations countrywide, retail, wholesale and uh, leisure hospitalities. Uh, it's the smaller ATMs that you find inside the premises. We basically install the machines and ensure that all the benefits of the machine in terms of the uh, in increased cash drawn from the machine uh, and offering consumers safe and convenient access to their cash on site, these benefits all flow back to the merchant in the form primarily of increased spending on the premises, savings on their cash deposits, um, rebates, um, additional branding and advertising opportunities, as well as savings on their merchant credit stroke debit card terminals. Well, uh, obviously I've always been interested in cash, uh, like the rest of us, but um, uh, to be honest, I've always had an interest in uh, IT and technology. Uh, when I studied, I did a joint uh, accounting and information systems honors. Uh, so I've always been interested in technology, uh, financial services, etc. Um, but the opportunity uh, to deploy ATMs in South Africa did really uh, st stumbled across me one evening when I needed cash and I noticed that the number of ATMs deployed or available was uh, few and far between and, uh, and then we started looking into Spark ATM systems and making, that, uh, making it a reality. Uh, a business colleague of us actually suggested that we enter the competition because he'd entered it in, uh, in previous years. Primarily, uh, I think twofold. One was the, uh, the possibility of winning and the accolades of, of, uh, which that brings for a young business that was um, pretty exciting. And also the opportunity to benchmark our business. The whole application and interview process is very thorough and it gives you a great opportunity to benchmark your systems, your processes, your people, um, your finances, your controls. Uh, and uh, that's basically the reasons why we entered. But I think entering anything in the banking sector in South Africa, there are huge barriers to entry in terms of partnering with a bank, um, uh, entering into the payments network in South Africa. So that was a, a big hurdle we had to overcome initially. Um, and I think then typically the, um, the normal hurdles around starting a business, primarily funding in the early days. We didn't receive a huge check from an angel in investor or a venture capital fund. Um, so funding the business initially was um, very tight, but it taught us some good disciplines which uh, we've implemented in the business. Um, and then the lead times, you often think things are going to take quicker than they do and in reality uh, things take a while, at least uh, two to three times longer than you'd expected. Um, so uh, those were some of the initial hurdles in the, bus in the business in terms of getting, getting, getting going. Absolutely, I think it's a, it's a great process to go through um, regardless of whether or not you make the finals uh, uh, or not. It's a, a great process to go through to allow you to benchmark your business, um, have your business critically reviewed by um, top businessmen in the country, our business partners in Sunlam collectively uh, who see many businesses uh, week in and week out and they, they provide some great feedback on, on your business. So I would absolutely uh, um, say go for it. The rewards are huge and uh, if you've started something and you're proud of it and you're proud of what you've achieved, why not subject it to this process and uh, potentially win it, uh, at, the very least, um, at the very least learn a lot from the process. Sure, there are a lot of entrepreneurs that, that, that motivate and inspire me. Um, some of them have no name, some of them are, are street vendors, some of them uh, you pass on the street and I'm, I'm just amazed at uh, people's resourcefulness in, uh, in being able to pull themselves out of the gutter in South Africa and actually create a job for them when, when, when jobs are not that forthcoming. Um, but more formally, there are two companies that, that I follow very closely and that for me um, are play a huge role in terms of uh, being role models for me. There are two South African companies, uh, namely Naspers um, and their uh, inspirational CEO, Kurs Becker, um, and Discovery uh, Holdings and, uh, and their CEO, Adrian Gore. Both of these companies um, um, all, 
although they are huge and are public companies and have achieved so much, they continue to innovate and reinvent themselves uh, every week, every month. Um, there's huge innovation in these organizations. They are um, forever launching new products um, and improving existing products. Um, they take their employee, uh, their, their, their levels of employment and, uh, and their offerings to employees extremely seriously. Uh, and I guess most importantly, they're hugely profitable. So to be able to pull all of this off um, is, is hugely inspiring, motivational to me personally. Uh, and there are companies that I follow very closely and that uh, indeed if Spark ATM Systems can one day achieve uh, any, any, anything close to their lofty heights, we'd, uh, we'd be, very, uh, be very fulfilled on the side. Absolutely, I think the acknowledgement for a relatively young business, we are in our sixth year of operation, the acknowledgement and the accolades that winning, uh, being a finalist firstly and winning the, the competition last year for myself as well as for the business brought were, were huge. It was huge um, positive reinforcement of the good things we were doing. Um, there was great publicity around uh, winning this, this very prestigious award. Um, and I think it really made people feel great about being part of a winning team. Um, I think it also acts as some uh, inspiration to other potential um, uh, entrepreneurs, guys who want to start businesses in this country, which is a huge focus and should be a huge focus in South Africa. Um, I think our winning uh, really motivated them and provided some inspiration as a role model for them hopefully to go on and, and start their own businesses as well. Um, our particular sector has become a lot more competitive uh, today in 2012 than it was when we started doing this in 2006. Um, the banks have uh, definitely turned their attention to our sector of the market, which is the lower volume uh, convenience sector of the market. Uh, so we are definitely competing with the banks, um, which is challenging. I mean, they have huge marketing budgets uh, and huge resources, but at the same time, we believe that we really deliver phenomenal customer service, which is something that we do, we believe we do a lot better than the banks. So um, it's encouraging when we come up against the banks and uh, more often than not win. Um, and I think a big issue in our country at the moment are the bombings, which are happening primarily to the street facing ATMs. Um, we don't deploy these type of machines, all of our machines are in store, so luckily we haven't had the same level of attention from these bombers that the banks have had, but uh, nevertheless the bombings are very, um, uh, they're doing huge reputational damage to our whole industry and it's something that collectively as an industry we're working on to eradicate. I think we can take a leaf out of some of the um, the successes that the Brazilian approach to entrepreneurship has has uh, has, has seen um, in that country, there's been huge strides in terms of entrepreneurship. Um, there's a number of uh, 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 strategies that have been implemented in Brazil at the highest levels to make sure that entrepreneurship is 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 promoted um, and taken up by. Uh, by graduates and, and employees alike. Some of the elements that we should be focusing are, are number one, to elevate the whole concept of entrepreneurship, in my opinion, to a ministerial level. There should be a minister of entrepreneurship in South Africa. The potential impact that uh, um, increases in entrepreneurship can have on the unemployment rates in South Africa are massive, as we've seen in the likes of Brazil and many of our emerging market peers. Um, so by elevating it to the top conversation in the country, you, you, you make it a, a, a focal point in the economic and political debate, which is where it should be. Um, critically, I think also uh, there should be incentives, so there should be financial incentives to entrepreneurs to start businesses. Um, uh, in Brazil, they actually pay entrepreneurs for the first year or two while they're setting up the business, while the going is tough. They actually the government or provincial government actually pays uh, entrepreneurs uh, to ensure that they actually get out of the starting blocks. Um, 
Something else we could do in this country is set up a one-stop shop. When we started, I mean, the number of different ports of call you have to go to in South Africa to, to set up your business, register it for taxes and VAT and income tax uh, and the like is, is, is hugely time consuming and uh, there's quite a lot of red tape still. So by setting up a one-stop shop um, to make life easier for, for startups of, uh, of any size, um, I think that would uh, that would go a huge way. And lastly, mentoring and coaching by by setting up industry-specific mentorship programs with successful entrepreneurs in that industry. I believe you could give um, uh, budding entrepreneurs role models uh, that they could bounce critical ideas off and ensure that those critical first few decisions as they're getting going are, are made with the assistance of some uh, some uh, insightful mentors.